Good day. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Today on the podcast, I'll be joined by Pastor Matthew Tucker and by Pastor Stephen Aldridge. We're going to be talking about the subject of the doctrine of repentance. Uh, This is quite a, a foundational truth to the Christian faith. It is, if you are a Bible student, something that you are certainly acquainted with. However, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, stir among people in regard to argument over this particular doctrine. And so we want to look today, if the Lord will give us the grace, at the uh, subject of the doctrine of repentance here at the Higher Grounds Podcast. You stay tuned. Good day. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Uh, Thank you for joining us uh, on this morning. I hope it's morning where you're at. We try to air every uh, Monday morning at 6 a.m. Get on up. Get up. Get on with it. Amen. (laughs) Sometimes I'll get up a little early, you know, and and I'll I'll, uh, go over to... uh, uh, to our Facebook page, and I'll just go ahead and air the thing a little early. You know, yeah. just go ahead and get her on over. Yeah, put it on, amen. Brother Andy gets up early, but if you've gone with him to youth camp, he always gets up extra early at youth camp. I mean, you're already right. going off of like four hours of sleep a night. Or three. Yeah, or three, and he'll just set it for super early and yeah. get up and get going. So That's right. Yeah, but that's good for us. It's good. Crucify the flush. The flesh. It's a flood of flesh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, through the through the thick and the fin. Thick and the fin. This, yeah, thick and the fin. That's that's an inside youth camp joke about the thick and the fin. Thick and the fin. Amen. Or as some would say, thick and the fin. We thick and the fin. It, thick was a, the fin. it was a part of a testimony. Yeah, absolutely. It was a good one, too. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Matthew. Hey, preacher. <laughs> How you doing, Matthew? <laughs> doing good. How's things going? It's going pretty good. As far as you know. As far as I know, everything's good. The cup yes, of coffee's sir. good. I'm telling you, we're just having a good day. We're drinking some more of the Hognet coffee. Hognet right? coffee. Come straight here from Dumfries, Scotland. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm certainly glad to, I glad tried to drink to, it. I tried to pay for the shipping. And Jody wouldn't let you. He wouldn't let me. That's what he told me. So while we're drinking the coffee here, he told me that every time we get on the show... Show, show, national or live TV <laughs> to make sure we show. we pray for it, and so we're gonna we're Amen. gonna do that. We're gonna do that, brother Jody. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Hey, won't we do that right now? He's a missionary there in Dumfries. Yes, uh, there in Scotland, and so Matthew, pray for brother Jody. Lord, yeah. we thank you for this day. Thank you for your gift. Yes, God. Blessings. Thank you, Lord. Your grace on life, and Lord, we God promise, bless brother, that ministry, Jody, that we pray for. Touch every brother time Jody. Touch call, his family, Lord. God, God. Touch his church. Give him soul and for his labor. Meet every need. And pray that you and, bless and his family, to their his church, heart, God. and I would pray that yes, many souls be saved and added to the yes, church Lord. there. And we yes. thank you for it, Jesus. Wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we were uh, talking on the uh, promo about dealing with the doctrine of repentance, mm-hmm. and I, I um, been at ministry for thirty years, and so being at ministry for thirty years, traveling extensively throughout the United States, and different places in the world, uh, definitely the doctrine of repentance has been brought up and discussed uh, yeah. among uh, we, you know, we who are uh, preachers and heard messages on the subject of repentance. I've heard some things stated about repentance that just simply are uh, not true. Mm-hmm. And then I've heard repentance downplayed to the place and point where it's a non-existent truth or it is merged mm-hmm. with another Uh, soteriological truth about salvation. And so that being said, what we want to do is we want to try to, uh, if the Lord will help us, we want to try to clear it up if we can in some way. So if you happen to have your Bible, I want you to go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter number six today. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter number six. The Apostle Paul writing to to Jewish believers in that first century. I believe it was the Apostle Paul. If you disagree with me, uh, that is, uh, you're right. We uh, we live in America where everyone has the right to be wrong. And so we're going to look here in the book of Hebrews chapter number six. Yeah. Now in Hebrews six, um, as he is writing here, he's talking about uh, the, uh, the getting past the foundations of the faith, getting mm-hmm. past the the ABCs, the nuts and bolts of faith. Mm-hmm. In right. verse one, he says, 
what we want to do is we want to leave the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Now, this does not mean that the doctrines of Christ are unimportant, right? right. I mean, what it means is we need to get past kindergarten. Yep. We need to get past the starting gate. He said, here's what we need to do is we need to go on to perfection. That word perfection is not dealing with uh, sinless perfection, uh, but he's dealing with the maturity of the believer. He yep. said we need to get to a, a state of being matured as believers. Then he says this, and he said, we don't need to lay again the foundation of repentance. Mm -hmm. yes. We don't need to lay again, down again, the yeah. foundation of repentance. Yeah. So I want to stop and make this statement. He said, not only the foundation of repentance from dead works, yeah. works that don't work, Okay, mm -hmm. he said. But what we and of faith toward God. Yeah. So he did. He said that that faith and repentance are both uh, are both critical areas that need to be dealt with. They are basic doctrinal truth about salvation. Yeah. But as a believer, a believer needs to move past those to the deeper, richer truths of sanctification unto God. Yep. And so this being said, we want to start today by dealing with the subject of repentance. Now, have you ever heard, Matthew, any um, what you would call misinformation that has mm -hmm. been spread about repentance or untruths that have been spread about repentance? Have you ever heard any that you could particularly point to? If you haven't, I have. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the most most common ones in our day now is that repentance is not a New Testament doctrine. Mm. Right. They say that's the Old Testament economy. We don't have to... Well, I have to repent, but one time that's at salvation. After that, there's no more repenting. Right, mm -hmm. and and this is this is embraced um, to some degree by those who are stretching their dispensations yes. past right. where they need right. to be, exactly uh, right. either becoming ultra in their dispensations right. or hyper yes, in their dispensations. And th they may not mean to come across this way in the presentation of the gospel, but the gospel uh, basically is an analytical agreement with the truth yes. of the death and burial and resurrection right. of Christ, and that becomes my salvation. Now, surely yeah. surely they, you know, they, they don't espouse that as I have stated it. Right. Because because salvation is not an adherence to an or even an embrace mm -hmm. of an analytical truth. It is a, a heart work of God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, that, that being said, what are some of the things that you've heard, Bruce? Yeah, I was just going to add that if you preach repentance, if someone is given a rebuttal to that, and when you start mentioning that, they say you're adding a work yeah. to the grace of God. Right. Remember, you're saying that I've got to do this and do this, and right. you're adding an and, and so that if it's repentance grace. But you got to understand, repentance is just as much of a biblical doctrine as faith or hope sure. or charity or sure. salvation or the blood and all, all along those lines. And throughout Jesus' ministry and preaching, you find him uh, dealing with repentance. And then through, I guess we can even look at just Paul's ministry, Paul's epistles, he deals with repenting. Oh, he does. And, he does. Uh, I think, what was it, Billy Mitchell? Well, we, I know we've quoted yeah. him before who said, if, re, the way I know I've repented is that I'm, I'm, I'm still repenting. I'm still repenting right. and seeing in my life. I'm, I'm still getting my heart right with God. Absolutely. And see, here's what a lot of people think when they when you deal with talking about sin after salvation. You know, they, they began to talk about, you know, the, the big three, you know, some kind of adultery or drunkenness or some kind of a yeah. murder or some kind of vile sin. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the Word of God it is very clear when it says, if a man knoweth to do good and doeth it not, right. to him it is sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sin sin is not just a commission. Sometimes sin is an omission right. in our lives. And, and so are we going to have to continue to deal with sin as a believer? Um, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. because of the flesh that we live in. Right. Mm -hmm. And the book of 1 John chapter number 1 said, if we say that we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. Right. So there is is a dealing with sin, and of course, I know uh, hyper dispensationalists, ultra dispensationalists agree will disagree with us using uh, using the doctrine found in the book of First John, chapter number one. Mm -hmm. But the Bible did say, and I and I know that First John was written to a first century yes, church, and it was given, and and there was uh, biblical doctrine of. 
uh, of a nature regarding their mm-hmm. salvation and their sanctification given by John to people that were living in the dispensation that you and I are now living in, the dispensation of grace. And he said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just yes. to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we do know that repentance is a biblical doctrine. Yes. Now, let me make this statement about repentance, some of the things that I've heard. So I've heard, of course, that what you you said about repentance, I have heard what you have said about repentance that it's um, you know to to repent is 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 to be a work. I heard I heard one preacher preaching against repentance, and he said this: you can't find the word repent mentioned one time in the Gospel of John. Okay, so <laughs> we we have uh, you know sixty five other books yes, of the Bible. The word repent, as is used in the Bible, is used mm-hmm. 46 times. The word repentance is used 26 times. Sure. And the different variations of the spelling of the word yeah. repent, repents, repented, repenteth, mm-hmm. repenting, uh, is found replete over and over and over yes, again sir. through the Scripture. So one of the things that I heard was this, that repentance is nothing more than you just believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, repentance is... All repentance is, is faith in Jesus Christ. When you are believing in Jesus Christ for your salvation, that is repentance. And so basically what they say is that repentance and faith are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. That faith and repentance are exactly the same. Now, we know that that's not true. Right. right. All right. The Apostle Paul made this statement about repentance. He said, repentance, you are to have repentance toward God. Mm-hmm. Yes. And faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Repentance toward God and faith, faith in, in the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Mm-hmm. Now, why is that? Because you'll notice that repentance comes first in the chronological mention. Mm-hmm. And he says that that repentance is directed toward God. Now, I, I didn't consciously do this because I come to God just as a sinner, not knowing a whole lot. Yes, sir. But in literality, this is what I did. I went to God and I said, I'm sorry for my sin. Sure. I'm sorry for being a sinner. I'm sorry for being what I am. And then I turned around and I placed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did right. for the salvation of my soul. And, and he changed my life. Mm-hmm. So what do you have, Brother Steve? I know that you you had some of Paul's writing dealing yeah. with, with uh, repentance. Yeah. What you got? I, I think you can go through Scripture and you can find repentant sinners where God deals with sinners. I believe you can find where even in the Old Testament where Nineveh was, there's repentance that's taking place right. in there because they're turning from sin, turning right. to God. Not right. being that message. But I want to look at what Paul said. Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, now remember, this letter he's mentioning is the, re, is the rebuke of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians, he's not telling them how great of a church they are. That's exactly right. He, he comes in there, he's dealing with sin and fornication and all those things. And this is what he said, referring back to the first letter. 2 Corinthians 7 and 8 says, For though I made you sorry with a letter... I do not repent. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm not, not changing my mind. I'm not about changing this. my message or anything. He said, "Though I did repent, for I perceive the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were for but a season." Verse nine. Now I rejoice that ye were made sorry. I'm glad that you showed some sorrow, right? But that ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us and nothing. Right. Now here's the tie in verse that. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Right. He did not say that sorrow, you know, uh, is is repentance. Neither did he say the sorrow produced salvation. No. He said, for godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's happening first. Right. And then he's mentioning to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So it's not just enough to be sorry for your sin. The right. drunkard can say all day long, and I'm, I'm sorry I keep drinking, but I want to go to heaven, so let me just go ahead and do this, and I don't have to give anything up. No, I, I'm turning from my sin. You made the statement. Christ never saves anyone who wants something more than to do Christ. That's exactly right. And and you can play any way you want to. But if you say that a man doesn't have to give anything up, and I understand the work of God after salvation. I understand that. But if he comes down there saying, I'm going to come get this little you know ticket to heaven, and then I'm going to go back and smoke my dope and drink, and I'm going to go live my own way and do those things, then he's not coming. There's been no repentance worked yes. in his right. heart. 
Well, you know, the the whole issue is the issue of sin. Mm. It's an issue of sin and the Savior. It's the issue of me being a sinner and him being a Savior. And him giving his life and his life's blood to save me from the condition of being being in sin. Repentance is you not paying for your sin. That's exactly You're turning from your sin to accept the free gift of salvation. That's correct. And and that takes place by sovereign work of God. Absolutely. And that doesn't make us a Calvinist to make that statement that we just made. I'll give you some scripture in regard to that. But the bottom line is this, you know, no man, no man, one boy girl, Mm -hmm. is going to come to God except the Father. Jesus said, no man cometh unto me. And Jesus is the Savior. Mm -hmm. No man cometh unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I'll raise him up again at the last day. Mm -hmm. You don't come to God for salvation without a sovereign work, since some of you don't like that work, a divine work, a providential work of God Mm -hmm. being done in your heart to woo you and draw you unto the Lord. Right. Now, if God is drawing you unto himself, he's got to be drawing you away from yes, something. That's exactly right. And he's drawing you away from what has you bound mm-hmm. that's taking you to hell without God. Right. And that is sin. That's, that's why in the ending of Revelation, when the Lord is is committing those to the lake of fire, mm-hmm. he said, but the fearful and the unbelieving... Believing. And the abominable and and murderers Mm -hmm. and adulterers and sorcerers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say... He doesn't say singularly and only, mm-hmm. but the unbelieving go to the lake of fire without God. Mm-hmm. No, he names the sin yes. that they were known for, right. whether it was lying or adultery or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And so we do understand that this is an issue. C.S. Lewis, and uh, get my glasses, C.S. Lewis was making this statement, and I, I, well, I know we don't agree with C.S. Lewis on every little jot and tittle, but he did say a few things that were worthy of remembering. Mm-hmm. He said this, fallen man is not simply an imperfect creature who needs improvement. Mm-hmm. He said, fallen man is a rebel who must lay down his arms, laying down your arms, surrendering, saying you're sorry, realizing that you have been on the wrong track Hmm. and getting ready to start life over again from the ground floor. This process of surrender, this movement, full speed astern, is what we Christians call repentance. And and that's true. Repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of direction in one's life. Go ahead, Brother Matt. Yeah, so we were talking about repentance, and I, I, I was struggling finding quotes before we started the, the podcast. But I, I, to grieve over sin is one thing, mm-hmm. but to repent over sin is another. Oh, yeah. And a right. lot of times, a lot of folks don't want to repent until they get caught. And a repentance is not only saying, I'm sorry, it's also saying, I'm through. That's exactly right. I'm so, done. Until you get to that place in your life, you're not ready to repent. Yes. And you can, we can repent. We can go to the altar and cry a lot of crocodile tears and get up and bring back what we took and mm-hmm. keep going on doing the same And many thing. do. And, and many do. do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, um, Thomas Watson, the the great Puritan writer, and uh, made this statement. And if you've never read Behind the Puritans, you've got to have your thinking cap on when you read and you've got to know how to chew and spit whenever you need to chew and spit. But Thomas Watson made this statement. He said, he said, before a man, before a man can ever come to Christ, he's got to come to himself. Sure. Now this, this statement that Thomas Watson made was in reference to in relation to the prodigal son. Now, tell that story. Oh, yeah. Um, now, here's the prodigal son. He did what? Mm-hmm. He, he said, I, I want what's owed me. Yep. He takes his goods. He goes to the far country. Mm-hmm. He, wastes his subs, he wastes his substance, substance. on riotous living. Yes, sir. And as soon as he wastes his substance on riotous living, you know, he comes to, to himself. himself. Right. That's the key. He comes to himself. But it's not enough mm-hmm. to just come yourself. to yourself. mm Right, that's only the first step. That's right. Yes. He he had to be willing to to leave that. I'm gonna I'm leave, I'm not dragging all this back with me. I'm not even gonna say, God, you come to right. me. I'm turning loose of where I am and what I'm doing, and I'm I'm getting to God. I'm right. getting to the Father. Right. And whether you take Him as a backslider or a sinner, however you do it, I'm I'm leaving this and I'm getting to God. And I think right. as a sinner. 
he turns loose of what he has so that he can get back because he knows it's much yes. better than what the Father has. For right. Us. Adrian Rogers said uh, years ago, uh, before his death, of course, he always said it before his death, right? Yeah. He said this. He said, one thing God will never accept from you, and that's an alibi. Oh, my. And there's a lot of people that are bringing alibis to yes. God and saying, yes. well, you made me this way, yeah. you know, and surely you're going to have to look over some things in my life because, I mean, you know, I'm this way because, you know, my, my mom and dad, you know, gave me scrambled eggs yeah. instead of poached eggs at breakfast yeah. or whatever their excuse may be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's an irrational statement I just made because it's irrational to bring an alibi to God yeah. in regard to your sinful state. It requires, mm -hmm. doesn't just take, it requires yes. repentance. Yes. That's right. Let me ask you this, Brother Andy. If... If if repentance is something we're doing, you know, if we're just saying, oh, you know, that's an Old Testament doctrine, or you don't have any scripture to back that up, or if there's no need of repentance, then what about you and I as believers? What are we doing when we sin? We we've got to come to God right. and we've got to repent. So are right. you saying that nobody has to repent anymore? Right. I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that not one of the first steps into getting to a, I guess, a sinless perfection? You don't never have to repent anymore. Yeah. You never have to ask God for forgiveness. You never have to get anything right one with another. Right. Well, we know that it's not true. That's exactly right. We, we know it's simply not true. All you got to do is read one time through the book of 1 Corinthians and realize mm -hmm. that ain't true. Mm -hmm. Them folks had a bunch of trouble. Yes, I'm sir. talking about a bunch of trouble. And mm -hmm. it was all fleshly trouble. It was sin. Yeah. And they had to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And the, the dealing with it was getting right with God. Now, when you get to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, chapter number 2, the Apostle Paul is writing back, and most most scholars concur yep. that he's talking about that guy from Acts chapter, or 1 Corinthians 5 that was messed up with his dad's wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, y'all need to be y'all need to ease up on that old boy <laughs> unless he be overcome with much sorrow. Yep. He was sorry over his sin, mm -hmm. had gotten it right, and was still in the church. And can I say this? Just uh, the side note: when a person repents of their sin and they're doing, they're wanting to do right, it's our job not to keep them down, but oh, to my. support them yes. and to help them in the Lord. And uh, to learn to do that is to learn to help them to serve the Lord with all their heart, mind, right. body, soul, right. spirit, and strength. Now, the Lord Jesus, five of seven churches in Revelation yeah. two and three, repent. Yes, sir. Repent, yes, sir. And, and there, there were two that he that he didn't mention that too, and uh, but that that's got to be something going on, on. On just recently at our church, a man stood up and he confessed sin in his life. He repented. He re had already repented in his heart, and made things right. He repented openly, you know, before the church and said, "I want, I want to make this right." And then we had the responsibility to accept that man. What are we going to put him under some kind of fine microscope? Right. And so I wonder what he meant. I don't know what he meant in his heart. But now he's going to begin doing works, meet for repentance, right. and begin to turn that and fellowship with his brothers right. and sisters in Christ. We as a church can labor with him and do the work of God. So, so here, here's a question, okay? Did, did John the Baptist preach repentance? Oh, yeah. And in his message of repentance, he said, bring forth fruit. Mm -hmm. fruit. Meat. meat for repentance. Which means what? Matt? Evidence. Evidence. Mm -hmm. In other words, real repentance gives evidence, evidence of the fact that you have right. repented. Yes, yes, sir. We can take that that same that same example all the way back to Nineveh in the book of Jonah. Did real repentance there? Did it did it did it uh, relate to them? In such a way as that it was relevant and real, and everybody could see it. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. Absolutely, it was All open. Right. Yeah, they they obeyed. Right. So John the Baptist preached repentance. Did Jesus preach repentance? Yes, sir. Yeah. Did the Apostle Paul preach repentance? Uh, absolutely. And did Jesus? And then he preached it again. That's right. <laughs> and did Jesus not say? Was it in the book of Luke mm -hmm. where Jesus, when he was leaving, when he when Jesus was leaving here, it's it's I believe it's in the book of Luke mm -hmm. where he said that repentance was to be preached among all men. Mm -hmm. Now, now here's another irony. Here's another irony about uh, about. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's verse number 47 of 24 of the book of Luke. Yes, sir. Jesus said to them, he said, and that repentance and remission of sins, in other words, those are connected intrinsically, yes. repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among who? All nations. Beginning where? Jerusalem. Now let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. 
Let me ask you a question. Did those men, did those 12 men, did they get to every nation that would ever be on the top side of the globe? No. 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 We are now reaching people in the it's 20th feeling. century right. that never heard the gospel the before, and now in, right. and, which means if every nation has got to hear about repentance, it wasn't going to hear it in the first century. Mm-mm. Yeah. You follow what I'm right, saying, right, right. and so that being said, the Bible one of the the one of the erroneous um, doctrines regarding repentance is that repentance was for the Jew only and not for the Gentile. Mm-hmm. The, the repentance was for the Jew only and not for the Gentile. The Apostle Paul made this statement that God commanded all men everywhere to repent. Maybe Is that not repent. what he said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God commanded all men everywhere to repent. Well, all men are not Jews. No. We're Jews and Gentiles, and right. so the the the, the <laughs> doctrine of repentance yep. is for every person. Now, I want to give you another little thought yeah. for some that. of our brethren that are stretching on their dispensations. <laughs> um, you ready for this, fellas? Listen, when the Apostle Paul told Timothy, and this is this is for those who believe that. That repentance is an Old Testament doctrine, okay? When the Apostle Paul told Timothy to preach the Word and that from a young child he had known the Holy Scriptures, which was able to make him wise, Mm -hmm. what Word was he talking about and what Scriptures was he talking about? Old Testament. He wasn't talking about the Gospels. They didn't come along until AD 90 or so, right? Right. So... When he when he tells us when he tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth, what words he talking about? Yeah, yeah. He was talking about the old yes, writ of, yeah. of scripture. Yeah. He wasn't talking about the gospels. No, no, he wasn't talking about the epistles. No, he wasn't talking about anything in the New Testament. He was talking about the Old Testament text, right. which they were taking and applying the truths from them to Christ Jesus and sharing that with the church. Yes, right? Sir. Absolutely. Now, here's the thought here's the thought I want to get to. Mm-hmm. Most people they're they're messed up in regard to uh, in in repentance. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've, I've, I've tried to tell God how sorry I am, mm-hmm. okay, and, and it just don't work. <laughs> well, we have to understand that godly sorrow and worldly sorrow or earthly sorrow are two totally different things, right? Yes, sir. So go to Acts chapter number 5. Mm-hmm. Now, this is right after the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter number 5. In Acts chapter number 5, uh, the Apostle Paul had uh, preached it. All right, the Apostle Peter preached in mm-hmm. Pentecost, chapter number 2. Then they went to the gate called Beautiful. This is right after the gate called Beautiful. Okay, mm-hmm. Acts 5.31. Read it, Matthew, mm-hmm. if you will. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. We got to know that's Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Now, next. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Mm-hmm. Now, Peter is preaching to a Jewish congregation mm-hmm. at the temple. Yes, sir. All right. So in this instance of Scripture, he makes this statement about repentance. He said that, that Jesus is the prince, he's the Savior, and that God gives yes. repentance to Israel, yes, mm-hmm. sir. right? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. In other words, repentance was not generated by Israel in the human effort of being sorry. Repentance is of a godly sort. Sure. Godly sorrow worketh godly repentance yes, unto salvation. Right. So let's go to another chapter, mm-hmm. Acts 11. Yep. Acts 11 is... Um, Acts 11 is Cornelius, okay? Yeah. Cornelius was saved, a Gentile was saved at the preaching of the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter number 10. Now, in Acts 11, the Apostle Peter is back. He's back with um, the mm-hmm. church at Jerusalem, and he's giving a report about the evangelistic work that has gone on among the Gentiles. Verse 18, read it, Brother Steve. Verse 18. 11, 18. Yep. When they heard these things... They held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance. 
repentance unto life. Mm-hmm. Granted <laughs> repentance unto life. So yeah. in verse number Didn't 18, yep. we're talking about the Gentile mm-hmm. now. And he says of the Gentile, he said that God had granted repentance unto them. Just like God granted repentance to the Jew, right. God is now granting repentance or giving mm-hmm. or establishing the doctrine of repentance in the hearts of Gentile believers. Now go finally to the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2, the Apostle Paul is teaching Timothy uh, in this pastoral epistle about his handling of his pastoral duties uh, there at the church at Ephesus. Now, notice what he said, if you will, in this text. In chapter number 2 and verse number 25, Mm -hmm. the Bible says this, "...in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure..." If God peradventure will give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. Right. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And so God is giving and granting repentance right. unto the Jew in Acts 5, mm-hmm. yeah. to the Gentile individual yep. in chapter number 11 of Acts, and now he is granting repentance to a Gentile congregation at Ephesus right. and to the people who are involved there who mm-hmm. are in need of help from the Lord. Yes. Repentance is not something that is human-generated. Repentance, as is faith, mm-hmm. is a gift of God. Faith, may I say it again, it is a gift of God. Faith mm-hmm. is not something that we generate from within inside of ourselves to believe with mm-hmm. the mind. Mm-hmm. Faith is a gift of God. As a matter of fact, Galatians 2 and 16 tells us that we are saved by the faith of Christ. That's a a topic for another episode. But in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the Bible said, For by grace we're saved. Through faith. And that not? Of yourselves. It's a gift Gift. of God. Somebody said, well, that means that grace is a gift of God. In the English language, the antecedent in that verse is unclear, which means the next two nouns it is referring to. Mm -hmm. So it is referring to faith Mm -hmm. and grace. Grace. Both faith and grace are a gift of God. It is not of my works, Mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. And if I could give, you know, there are some who say, well, you know, I'm just a a Romans road kind of guy in regard to salvation. Well, let's go to the book of Romans for you. Romans 10, that's a good chapter. You like that chapter? Yeah. Let's go to Romans 10, 17. What does the Bible say? So then faith by by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which means if faith is coming to me, Mm -hmm. that means I didn't. I didn't what? I, yeah, and I didn't Generated. have it. Didn't right. didn't have so I had to get it. Yes. And how did I get it, Brother Steve? By hearing. And hearing what? The Word of God. You see, there's nothing that God requires in salvation that God does not provide. Amen. God provides the Holy Spirit of God to bring you to himself. God provides the Word of God to produce faith and repentance in you. God provides a, a man of God, if you will, or a, some kind of a testimonied witness of the Scripture to you, whether it be a recording or a gospel tract or whatever the case may be. The, the Word mm-hmm. of God is published to you, and it, and it births repentance and faith in you. And as a result of that, what do I bring to the table? I bring to the table a will with a decision to be made. Sure, yep. On what God has granted me in faith and repentance. Absolutely. I'm going to say yes to God. Yes, Yes, sir. I'm going to say yes to God. And to say yes to God is to say no to me. Yep. Yes, There's a lot of debate about the subject of lordship, and there's a lot of people that hate that word for, I don't know why, but they do. And it may be because some people have misrepresented the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But you, Vance Havner was real clear on this particular subject. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're not going. You're not going to have Jesus and everything else. Yep. Yes. You're going to have Him and Him alone. Yep. I mean, that's, that's that's why He came. He came to save you from yourself mm-hmm. and to save you unto Himself. Yes, sir. And so it's important that we realize Amen. that. Yeah. Parting comments, brother Matthew. 
Any parting comments, Brother Matthew? Yeah, we can look at Psalms 51. <laughs> and uh, I just got to get my head wrapped around everything that's just been said. But in Psalms 51, uh, we don't have time to read the first 12 verses, but the first 12 verses, David is dealing with his sin. And, of course, if you're a Bible student, you know Psalms 51 deals with the sin of Bathsheba. And uh, so the man, the God sent the man of God to David and, uh, and uh, given that parable. And in the first three verses, David acknowledges his sin. You'll notice that David says, me and my, right. which means he's acknowledging, he's perceiving, he's discerning and recognizing that it was his fault. He didn't blame Bathsheba. That's right. He didn't blame Uriah. He didn't blame the circumstances that was in. He was acknowledging That's the sin. Right. Verse 4, 5, and 6, David is admitting his sin. He is confessing. In other words, he agrees with God on right. his sin. He says the same thing God says about it, that it was sin. And, verse, and then verse 7 through 10, uh, David is acquitted of his sin. And uh, you'll notice that verse 7 through 12, David talks about his spirit. He said that God renewed his spirit. In other words, that word renewed means to repair. Right. And he said to renew me a right spirit. In other right. words, when he sinned, he had a wrong spirit. Right. But when he repented... And and uh, ask God to forgive him. He said, renew my right spirit. And right. David said, restore to me the joy Amen. of thy salvation. Amen. 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 Any parting words, Brother Steve? Just to quote Christ, Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He put an emphasis on repentance. He said it twice. He yes. said it in verse 3, and he said it verbatim again in verse number 5. Yeah, the Apostle Peter said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all, A-double-L, yep. should come to repentance. Yep. Vance Havner, uh, in regard to writing on these subjects, made this statement. Now, I don't have it memorized, so I have to read it to you. He said, We don't have to be theologians to be saved, mm -hmm. but... No one can take Jesus as Savior and at the same time willfully and deliberately and knowingly refuse Him as Lord and be saved. Mm -hmm. A man has got to repent of where he's at. Yes. It, one person said repentance means simply this, siding with God against yourself. Right. And I believe that to be true. I hope that we have not muddied the waters for you, but take your Bible, a good concordance, take some time, a couple of good pots of coffee, a notepad, and a pencil. You can sit down and figure it out. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. The same Holy Spirit of God that inspired those men to write it is in your heart, Amen. and he will direct you mm -hmm. into all truth. And from the Higher Grounds Podcast, you keep pressing on the upward way. 